as I see it, if you're going to have any sort of success in an engineering-based competition like Electricon, uh, you're going to need four things. Uh, creativity, uh, hard work, money, and time. However, if you're running short on one, you can make up for it by an increase in one of the others. Um, if you work hard enough, long enough, you can kind of muddle through your problems and come up with an acceptable result. If you're particularly creative, maybe you can come up with a novel solution to some problems and uh, save yourself some money or some work. Uh, if you have a big enough budget, you can just kind of buy your way out of the whole thing and come up with somebody else's work or a turnkey solution. Um, with this project, what I wanted to do was to see just how cheaply I could build an Electrothon car and get it on the track. Something something decent, maybe not the best, definitely not the worst. Just something that would get out there and compete and run some races and give people an opportunity who otherwise wouldn't have that opportunity to get into the sport. Um, I added the restriction to this project of not having any welding. That added a lot of, a lot of time and work to the, to the process. Uh, but the idea was that uh, you don't have to have $5,000 to buy a kit car, and you don't even have to have a welder to get involved in Electrothon and go out and have some fun. Um, so these parameters made me have to get real creative as to the, the construction techniques and the components and the overall design that, that I used. Um, I thought I could do this for maybe $1,200 uh, and have a car with, uh, I mean, complete batteries and everything. So you can go out and run the two races that are typical at an Electrophone event. Normally, they're about two hours apart. So you either have two sets of batteries to get through that or have one set of batteries that can be recharged fast enough that you're ready to go that two hours later for the next event, for the next race. Um, I didn't manage to do that. I missed it by a little bit, but not so bad. This car here cost, minus the paint and stickers and googly eye, uh, cost $1,297, um, which wasn't so bad. But for that price, I made sure I counted everything that I used, every nut, bolt, component, everything. Even the stuff I had laying around the shop that I used on it, I assigned a value to, and not some cheapy sweetheart deal. There were no unbelievable sales, there were no shady backroom deals. Everything is something that should be reproducible by a team wanting to get involved in the sport. Um, of course, prices change over time, so by the time you see this and you research it, maybe some prices have changed. But the point was, when I did it, it was all stuff that could be uh, duplicated pretty readily. Um, and it's cheaper than, than you might think. Uh, the results were, were really good, um, surprisingly so. I got this done in time to go to a three-day event down in Fort Myers. It was three days of racing, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and I wanted to do that because building a cheap car doesn't do you any good if you don't know how it's gonna play out, if it's gonna break in the first 10 minutes, or if it's gonna run the whole time. Um, but this, this one did, did pretty well. Uh, in the three days of racing, it did 126 miles in competition with an average speed of 27.4 miles an hour. And that includes about losing 12 minutes of track time when the sprocket came loose from the motor and it had to pit and go in and put the sprocket back on and get back out there. Uh, other than that, no, no mechanical failures. None of the components failed on me. Uh, the whole design held up well. The sprocket coming loose was more of an installation problem than it was uh, something you could fault to the car itself. Um, in the last race, we went out there and tried to kind of blow it up because it hadn't failed yet. So we were like, why not? What do we have to lose? Um, we hung it out there in the wind and it did 40 miles an hour on the straight stretches. Uh, came in uh, third out of six cars overall for that race. It, it did surprisingly well. Um, if you want to see more information on this, you can go to uh, the Electrothon America official 
look for that, official page, Facebook page, uh, where there's been several posts on its design and construction and uh, race results. Uh, you can also go on the uh, electrothonamerica.org and look for the forum, and there's a bunch of information on there too. Uh, anyway, over the next few videos, I want to partially disassemble this and uh, kind of do a walkthrough of what I did, how I did it, why I did it, and maybe if I should have done something different. Um, and when all that's finished, I want to put it back together and either sell it or possibly donate to a new Electrophone team trying to get started that doesn't have a car yet and doesn't have the funding to uh, get started. Um, the criteria will be you have to be able to come to the Pensacola, Florida area to pick it up because I cannot ship it. Um, and I want it to be used. I don't want it to end up in somebody's collection. I don't want it sitting in somebody's backyard. So I want, I want you to demonstrate the need for it uh, and the, the willingness and intent to use it. I, I will attach a um, email address in the description and you can apply via short essay as to why it would be important to your uh, organization and what the end goal would be and when you think and where you think you might be racing. Uh, a essay from a teacher and perhaps one from a student from the same organization would be rather compelling too, so consider that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So this is the budget beater, aka um, Angry Banana, aka Lemon Shark. Uh, it get, garnered a lot of names during its three days of racing. Generally, it was just called the Banana Car. But yeah, let's let's take it apart and uh, see how it went together.